but I'm going to have a crack at the Phys 1001 exam from 2016. Let's get started through the formula sheet. Okay, starting with Darren's heat and thermo questions. 5 moles of an ideal monatomic gas with initial temperature of 127 degrees C expand in the process absorb 1200 joules of heat and do 2100 joules of work. The final temperature of the gas is closest to. Okay. Um, the key here is that they absorb 1200 joules of heat and do 2100 joules of work. Therefore, there must be, they must lose 900 joules of internal energy and this will correspond to a certain temperature change. There are five moles. Okay, now let me look at the formulas and see if there's one I like. Here's an easy one. The change in the internal energy of an ideal gas is the number of moles times the specific heat at constant volume times the change in temperature. And CV for an ideal gas is F over 2R, where F is 3 for a monatomic ideal gas. So it's 3 halves R. Okay, and NCV delta T. Okay, let's go back. Delta U equals N, N, C, V, delta T, and C, V equals three halves R. Therefore, Delta T is equal to delta U over N C V equals delta U minus 900 over N 5 times C V 3 halves times R 8.314. Calculator time. There it is. Okay. Minus 900 divided by brackets 5 times 3 halves times 8.314 brackets equals equals minus 14.43. So we wish to add that to our original temperature of 127, gets 112. And we hope that the 112.56 is there. We hope it is there. Ooh. Ooh. Close to 110. Closer to 110 than anything else. We'll go there. Okay. All right. Next one, a red hot iron nail is dropped into a large insulated bucket of cold water. After some time, the nail and water have reached thermal equilibrium. Let delta SW be the entropy change of the water and delta SN be the entropy change of the nail. Assuming that together the water and the nail form an isolated system during the process, which of the following statements is true? So this, this question is going to trick you because some people think there is such a thing as conservation of entropy. They think that the entropy gained by the water must equal the entropy lost by the nail. But this, of course, is exactly what's not true. What is true is that the sum in a, in a spontaneous thermodynamic process, such as the nail being heated up by the water and the water cooling down the nail, well, the nail, yeah, by, yeah whatever, um, what happens is that the total entropy always increases. So we need an answer which says the sum of the entropies is greater than zero. Now the sum of the entropy of the water plus entropy of the water is greater than zero. That's not the intent there, okay? It's supposed to be the sum of the entropy of the water and the nail. 
but it doesn't matter because the water loses entropy, so that's wrong. Less than zero, that's wrong. Equal zero, that's wrong. Greater than zero, that's right. Equal zero, that's wrong. So it must be this one. So the water gains entropy, the nail loses entropy, and the sum of them is greater than zero. Okay. Right, questions three to five all refer to this picture. Now, it's important to note when looking at this picture that this is a very unrealistic picture. This thermodynamic process is not one that is going to happen very easily. There are two that we're used to. There are sort of four processes we're used to. There, there are ones where we keep the pressure the same and allow the volume to change. There's ones where we keep the volume the same and allow the pressure to change. And then there's isothermal and adiabatic. And this is none of those, okay? In fact, if you look at the temperature here and here, they're going to be different, probably. But the temperature in the middle will actually be a lot higher, okay? Because an isotherm would look something like that. And this is going to be higher. So anyway... Unfortunately, so it means it's a case you've got to throw your intuition away. It won't work. Okay, so let's look at it. The change of the internal energy of the gas for the process from A to B is closest to. So, all right. We can look at the temperature here. So PV equals NRT. So T equals PV over NR. So TA is equal to 500 times 20 over 4 times 8.314 equals three hundred point seven Kelvin. TB is equal to 150 times 80 divide bracket 8 times 3 oh, divide brackets 4 times 8.314 something like that anyway equals 360.8 Kelvin ok so delta T is equal to 60, okay, and delta U is equal to N C V delta T, which is equal to 4 moles times C V, which is 5 halves for a <sighs> diatomic gas, I think that's right, we'll see in the answers. Um, Five halves times eight point three one four times sixty. Okay, so let's do that. Four times five divided by two equals times eight point three one four times sixty equals four nine eight eight joules, five thousand joules. 5 kilojoules. Closest to that. So that looks good. Now, the next one says, what's the heat flow in? This one's actually quite easy because heat flow in, we have a certain amount of work done, a certain change in internal energy, so we can work out the heat flow in. What's the work done? The work done is just this area okay so it's going to be the average of 500 and 150 so that is three 
25 times that disk there times 60 325 times 60 equals 19,500 so the work done is 19,500 joules so therefore if we've done 5,000 joules of work uh, 5, 000, if we've increased our we've increased our internal energy by 5,000 joules and we've done 19,500 joules of work then the total amount of heat that's been put in must be 24,500 joules Closer, close enough to 25, okay. The change of entropy, hmm, okay. Now, all right, I forget how to do this bit. I don't remember how do I do change of entropy. I mean, I know that ds equals dq over t. But that doesn't save me because... Hmm can't figure out how to do this. I mean, you see, if I was to guess it right, if I was to guess it, I'd get it wrong. Because my guess would be, well, let's look at the heat. Just the total heat, 24,500. And let's divide that by the temperature. And like we've got 360 there and 300 there. So they say divide it by the average of those, 330. And we get 24,500 divide 330. And I get 74. And mm, that would be 60 or 90 or something. But it turns out that's wrong. The reason being that, as I say, it actually spends most of its time considerably hotter than either of those two temperatures. So, uh, so I'm trying to think, is there an easy way? We know that in an, following an adiabatic path, we know that there will be no entropy change following an adiabatic path. So we could, I mean, I'm just clutching at straws here because, hey, I'm in... I forget, but I think, what if we followed an adiabatic path down to, down to, till we got to the temperature? No, we can't. We can't, we can't, we can't. No, I'll come back to it. I can't do it. Or will I waste more time on it? Okay, look, I'm going to waste some time thinking, thinking, thinking. See, I'm sure there's a way to do it. Where I could follow an isotherm or an adiabat for which I can work out the entropy change. Let's look at the formulas. Maybe there's something in the formulas. that's the formula we need. This is no good because T is not constant. This is no good because, well, it's no good because, uh, yeah, I can't work out T easily. I suppose I can. I suppose that's probably it. 
and this is no good because this one we've got CV and CP and but we're not following a path of constant pressure or constant volume we're following some other path so that's no good as well uh. now I'll come back to it 